there wasn't a huge amount of optimism here that last night's indicative votes were going to provide clarity about a way out of the Brexit crisis, but there was real exasperation last night that none of the proposed options achieved a majority. Uh, and one thing I, I kept hearing from people here in Brussels last night was, why are they doing this now? Why didn't they do this two years ago? What this has revealed is that the UK has no idea what it wants in terms of Brexit, something that people here have known for some time, but really last night these votes crystallized that. Uh, so there is exasperation here, but people did notice that uh, two of those options did get close to a majority, or at least a lot of votes. Uh, so last night did provide a little bit of clarity in that it ruled out some options. For instance, the proposal that the UK should join the EEA, which is what Norway's relationship with the EU is, that got so little votes that seems to be really a non-starter. Uh, also, the Labour plan to have a customs union and regulatory alignment that was always kind of vague, that didn't get a lot of votes. And the ERGs, the hardcore Brexiteers proposal for a managed no deal, that didn't get votes either. So those seem to be out. That leaves us with the two options that did get a large number of votes. That is a, a permanent customs union with the EU and a second referendum, or to be more precise, a confirmatory referendum. Uh, so that would be basically the Remainer MPs are saying, look, Theresa May, we will approve your deal, but only if you promise to put it to the public before it actually becomes official. And you have to put it public in a referendum where the options would be your deal or remain. Uh, and so those are the two things that people here in Brussels are focusing on now, but they come with their own set of complications. Well, they certainly do. Uh, do EU leaders have any hope from those two items that were close to the majority, at least last night in London? Well, I mean, the issue is they came at the same time as Theresa May announcing her intention to resign after her deal is approved. And that's the problem. Let's say they do go forward with the customs union. That would kind of solve the issue because the backstop wouldn't be necessary, or at least it would never have to be put into force. And that maybe could get Theresa May's withdrawal deal through. The problem is the EU has said they cannot reopen the withdrawal deal based on Theresa May's red lines. One of her red lines was no customs union. If she drops that red line, then the EU will say, OK, we can reopen this withdrawal agreement, uh, fiddle with the backstop, and then maybe it can get past the line. The problem is they need some kind of guarantee that that customs union plan will actually be implemented after the divorce deal goes through. And we now know that Theresa May stepping aside and her likely successor is Boris Johnson, Jacob Rees-Mogg, really hardcore Brexiteers uh, that certainly wouldn't like having to implement a customs union with the EU. So here in Brussels, they would need some kind of guarantee that that customs union plan is really going to go forward. And that's probably why they would actually need to keep that backstop in the divorce deal even if the UK signals its intention to be in a customs union. So it's still tricky. Dave, thank you, Dave.